On this herbaceous plant on the shores of an alpine lake, an aggregation of aphids are tended by ants. Aphids suck the phloem of plants, trying to extract protein and lipids from the sugary fluid. They use some of the sugar for metabolic function, but there is just so much that they must get rid of most of it, so they extrude little droplets of sugary fluid called honeydew. Sugar is quite rare in the broader environment, and so the ants are attracted to it. Ants, which are usually predators of small insects, guard these aphids from other predators, including one of the most ferocious, the coccinellids. The ladybugs, or ladybird beetles, depending on where you grew up or how accurately you like your common names. Like butterflies that drift by on delicate wings and pollinate flowers, these colorful little beetles are one of the few insects not usually viewed with immediate disgust. While the bright color makes them a favorite of ours, it is actually a warning. Ladybugs taste bad. Really bad. They have alkaloid toxins in their blood, and if disturbed, they can ooze it out of their joints in a defense known as reflex bleeding. These alkaloids are so powerful that this tropical species can walk right through a usually ravenous army ant swarm without being torn apart, only receiving minor heckling from a few individuals. This honest warning about their toxicity is known as aposematism. These insects are major aphid and scale insect predators from their crocodilian larval form into adulthood. This makes them an ally of gardeners and farmers, and ladybugs are commonly released as agents of biological control. Biological controls on aphids and other pest insects, both by ladybugs and praying mantis, is in theory a great thing because the overuse of insecticides has taken its toll on many insects, including butterflies, bees, and even ladybugs. One species released in large numbers is the seven-spotted ladybug, which is also among one of the most familiar species, and even the state insect of five U.S. states. However, this celebrated insect is not actually native to North America. It's European, successfully established on American soil in the 1970s for pest control. Actually, quite a few pest control insects released into backyard gardens are not native, like this Chinese mantis, whose name indicates it's far outside its natural range when it stalks a North American backyard. Other ladybugs are also invasive, such as the Asian lady beetle, now a very common species. This is its larva. These invasive ladybugs outcompete the native ones, and declines have been noted in several native species. One such species is the covergent ladybug. Like the Eurasian species, it is also used as a biological control and sold to gardeners. When aphids are scarce, these beetles can switch to nectar for food. They are a fairly normal looking ladybug with red elytra covered in black spots. Elytra are the hardened wing covers found on all beetles. Other native ladybugs are a little different with less conventional patterning. This particular one, which I suspect is a variation of the two-spotted ladybug, has four large orange spots. This one that is all black with two red spots on the elytra is one of my favorites. It is called the twice stabbed ladybug, which has to be the most awesome name for any ladybug. Unfortunately, it is one of the species that has been on the decline. This ladybug is another native, Leconte's giant lady beetle. It is a behemoth compared to many of the other tiny native species, and is also larger than the invaders. As stated previously, these native ladybugs are quite uncommon when compared to the non-natives. My plea is that if you buy ladybugs to release into your garden, Make sure they are one of the native species. You should also make your garden more habitable to native species by planting native plants, and don't use or reduce the use of insecticides so these incredible little beetles can continue to eat those aphid pests for you.